Hello everybody, and welcome back. The third one of these little CK bu uh, bug suggestions, <laughs> improvement suggestion videos that I've been doing and I wanted to share with you guys. This one took me a little bit longer to write. I had a good time though, and we're gonna go over it here today. So this one is all about, let me get some music. I always forget to cue the music. Anyway, we're gonna look at the court position system. So the F5 shortcut takes you straight here. These are your court positions. And I have some thoughts. I think they're good compared to CK2, but there's definitely ways they could be better. And I want to share my thoughts with you. I'm curious about what you guys think. And I do love the sound of my own voice. So let's take a look at court positions. When I hit this, did I show you anything outrageous? No, I don't think so. Good. <laughs> so let's take a look at uh, court positions in CK3. They are, in my improvement, a huge improvement in CK2. The minor titles in CK2, which is uh, the closest analogy, and the direct uh, through line for some of them were uh, boring and bad. They just gave tiny little uh, boosts of prestige and cash to people in your realm. You just use them to either boost up the prestige of your heir or your um, opinion of some of your vassals. It was pretty boring. But in CK3, they're way better. So they're cool. They're cool. But they're kind of cumbersome. And let's go through a few of the ways that they are cumbersome. So when, as I say, when you open up your... Uh, your thing here, you get this, right? You hit F5 and you go here. There is a shortcut. It's F5, which is a bad shortcut because I can't hit F5 without moving my left hand. I can't really, I mean, can I show you on the keyboard? Let me, let me tell you. Okay, so here's a keyboard, right? Cool keyboard. I know. Oh, colors. Anyway, so you have a keyboard and this is the wrong hand, but this is where your, this is where your fingers sit on the keyboard. Yes. Let me go, let me go full camera. Hang on. I think I have a, I think I have a button for this. I do. Okay, so here's your keyboard. Here's where your fingers sit on the keyboard, okay? This, good keyboard shortcuts. Good keyboard shortcuts, good keyboard shortcuts. This, bad keyboard shortcuts. My hand can't reach there. My hand is over here. Admittedly, it's the other hand, so this is a little cumbersome, but my hand is here or around here, okay? So I should be able to reach all of the keyboard shortcuts. That's why Z and C are so good for confirm and deny. I'm sorry, I'm looking over here because that's where my webcam camera feed is. That's why these are such good shortcut keys for confirm, deny, switch to different tabs because I can reach these super easily without moving my hand. This is a, I'm not directing this at the CK3 team, just at, at all um, UX designers in general. This is an extremely basic piece of UX design. If you want someone to hit a shortcut, ideally they shouldn't have to move their hand, just their fingers. Hopefully that's obvious and clear. Anyway, um, so F5, not a great shortcut. It's easy to find because it's the first of the second set of function keys. So I do like that. Um, I can get to it pretty easily. But anyway, welcome to the wonderful mind of Christo, by the way. This is the kind of the way I think about things. <laughs> so anyway, we have these court positions. And look at how much screen is being used by the court positions. Now, admittedly, you might want your screen up as well in case you were trying to put a bunch of your... Uh, kids or people you had relationships with into court position. So let's assume we have to use this much space for the character window, okay? Now, what is this doing? What what are we achieving by having this huge space in the middle of the screen that just shows you this little, little letterbox window onto the map? It doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, it looks cool. The map is pretty. It's definitely pretty, but it's just a waste. All of these screens, with the exception of council and factions and intrigue, all of the others systematically underuse this space because clearly somebody decided in their infinite wisdom that it needed to go, you know, this far, this, this bit of the screen, that's all you get for your, your window. You get, let me, here, here we go. I'm doing lots of visual props today. <laughs> you get this bit of the screen. <laughs> I guess this, this is more awkward than it looks. You get this bit of the screen, okay? This bit, forget about it, forget about it. We need that to show the map for some reason. And I don't know why. And these people are very smart and talented, which is why I am so confused by these decisions because I think they are bad. Many of them are good. That one is bad. This is too small. Extend this at least to the midpoint of the screen um, because you don't need this. I'm not going to be looking at, okay, who should be my court physician? Oh, you know what, who I make my court physician depends on the exact borders between Prussia and Pomerania. I must be able to look at that while I make my choice. Nobody does this. Nobody does this. 
And why does it matter? Because this is a list of 17 positions. Trust me, I counted them. Uh, and in order to get from the first one to the last one, I have to scroll through. Let's count the ways. One, two, three, four, five, six full screens of scrolling down in order to get to the last one. That's insane. Don't do that. Why would you do that? This is, this is a way, way too long list. And it's a list that's needlessly long, even using the amount of space that it has. You can see here, look at this great big chunk of gap here. Why is there a gap here? Why, are there, why is half of the space, maybe, maybe close to 40% of the space on this list just empty? I don't, I don't understand. Remove this, compact the list, way more court positions can be shown in the same place. Ah, awesome. I remind you, and this is a good mechanic, a well-implemented mechanic. These are just things I think that can make it even better. And that one to me is a complete no-brainer, especially because if I scroll down, I mean, look how long it takes to scroll down. Now, some of you may not care. Some of you may be made of time and you just want to spend your time scrolling down through lists. I can't relate, but I know that you exist because some people don't think little UX things or UI things like this matter. Consider the following. For me to do this and scroll up this list hurts. Like this finger right now, hurts because I have repetitive strain injury. My, my, I, I use my computer to work and then I use my computer to play and the result is I am a sad boy and my, my hands hurt. Obviously, that's my fault. I should, I don't know, quit my job and become a writer and only write using uh, dictation and I should stop playing video games. But as long as we're not trying to force out people who have injuries, <laughs> maybe we could make it a bit more accessible by reducing needless scrolling and clicking in video games. That would be my hope, at least. So this is pointlessly long. Cut this space. I don't know why this space exists. Well, I have a suspicion, but it seems rude, so I'm not going to share it. But I, this, this space should not exist. Go to that. Easy. Next. Make it sensitive to the amount of info displayed. Pretty simple suggestion. So the horizontal space. One thing I want to point out about this is it's not because of smaller screens. I'd always assumed, yeah, you know, they're, they're, this is small because on a, on a smaller screen, it would fill more of the screen to remain the same proportional, sorry, the same absolute size while taking up more proportional size, right? That's not true. If you run this in a, um, a 720 pixel uh, by 1080 uh, window, uh, and you shrink it down, however much you shrink it down, it always takes up 30% of the screen. 30.08, if you're curious. Um, so, sorry, 30.8% of the screen, <clears throat> which is weird. It's weird, right? Someone has chosen to make sure you can always see the map. I don't understand this. I don't relate. Give me info front and center. Let me make my choices. Then I'll go back to the map. I spend almost the whole game looking at the map. It doesn't have to be there absolutely all the time. So next, um, yes, we're appointing, we're appointing someone. So we want to appoint two bodyguards. Let's take this bodyguard out, fire him. So we want to appoint two bodyguards. So first we scroll down and down and down. Then we get to the bodyguards. And we want to appoint both of these. I appoint this guy. And then, oh, it scrolled me back up. So I got to scroll back down again before I can appoint someone else. And of course I can't because I don't have anyone else in my court. But, you know, just an example. Why when I appoint someone does it scroll me all the way back to the top of the list so I have to scroll back down again? Don't do that. Don't do that. That's, that's, that's needless. Next, uh, we want to appoint someone. And this screen is pretty good. I do like this. Um, we can filter it. The filter window remembers where you put it and you can move it around. I can't move this window around. Don't know why. Let me move that window around. And it wastes all this space. I don't need to see these. And I don't need to see uh, Seleno just poking out at the bottom here. Extend this to fill the whole screen, obviously. Um, also, I know this is unbelievably minor, but why is the padding above the frame here slightly more than the padding below the frame here? It's just... It's just kind of sloppy. <laughs> sloppy is a, that's an overly rude word, but I mean, that's how I would describe it if I was, you know, writing the, the ticket to change it <laughs> at work. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's untidy. There you go. Untidy is a better word to use than sloppy. That should be a little bit higher up. Um, and I say this as someone who has never made a UI that is nearly this pretty. Um, so I'm not claiming to be more talented. I'm just saying, come on, let's move that a tiny bit up. Anyway, so you have the filters menu and I can filter by religion, culture, dynasty, ruler. Odd. Odd that there are only four. Whereas when I want to find a spouse for my son, I have all of these options. Why? Why let me filter by less things in this case? Fertility is potentially less relevant, but 
Let me decide that. I'm the player. Maybe I only want infertile people to be in my core positions because I'm afraid of my unfaithful husband who will have bastards aplenty if I, uh, if I the queen, appoint uh, bodyguards that are fertile. I want to pick unfertile, uh, sorry, infertile uh, people so I have fewer, fewer bastards. Um, or maybe I want to appoint a bunch of infertile people so I can breed with them. And not, or rather not breed with them, sleep with them and not have kids. Right? These are valid roleplay choices that are needlessly made more complicated because when you appoint and you go to filter, I can't filter by that. And there's lots of other examples, that's just one example. It detracts from the story roleplaying options that I have. Needlessly, needlessly. Next, um, we point our, and, and our new uh, antiquarian or physician or whatever, and I can see the total cost. Monthly salaries paid minus 0.62. That's not how maths works. <laughs> I just noticed. That's wrong. The monthly salary paid is 0.62, not negative 0.62. Salaries paid negative would imply that he was paying me to be his, my bodyguard, which I don't think is what's happening. Anyway, so it, it sums the salaries, but it doesn't sum the bonuses that you're getting, which is unfortunate. Something like Stellaris, uh, which does this, or uh, EU4, which does this, is really good at summing up all the modifiers because it knows that you're not going to be able to see them all at once. So do that, please. Sum up all the modifiers I get from all my core positions. And then we move on to death, right? So this is the pop-up that you get, which I can't click on for some reason. That's weird. Ah, oh, probably because I didn't attach it. But anyway, this is the pop-up that you get uh, when one of your people dies. Now there are some good things about this. I can see what position's been vacated. I can see their name. I can hover over here and see how like, they died or at least how I think they died. I can click on here and go and see their portrait and uh, see their family and the grieving widow and kids and whatever. What I can't do is click a button to go to the screen where I appoint the new Seneschal. That's an obvious one to me. This is what you can do in EU4. Your advisor dies, you can hit Z to hit the left hand thing and go to the screen where you can appoint a new advisor. It should be the same here. There should be a button here which should have a shortcut and the shortcut, by the way, should be Z, but that's okay. <laughs> if you don't make it that, I can just mod it so it is that. Um, give me a shortcut so I can go to um, appointing a new Seneschal. Just open up the window uh, where I appoint a new Seneschal. That would make this way less tedious because as it is, that pop-up comes up, right? Okay, so you're, on, you're here. That pop-up comes up and then you have to go, okay, F5. And then you have to find Seneschal, and then you have to click here. Okay, that's a waste. That's just a waste of the player's time. Give me the give me the option right there in the pop up. That would be awesome. And then this is the bit that I know will be more controversial. This is the bit that not everyone will agree with. I think you should be able to automate it. Just let me automate it. So this is uh, the system right now. You have to pick every one manually. And right now there are seventeen. Right, not all of them are available because I'm not. You know, I don't fulfill the requirements. But there's up to seventeen. Uh, and these guys are gonna die once every. 30 years? Let's say you appoint them average age 30, they live average 60 years. Is that about right for CK3? I really don't know. Uh, but let's say about every 30 years you have to reset them. Okay, so let me do some uh, some quick maths. We're starting in, let me get up a uh, calculator here. Okay, so we're doing it once every 30 years for uh, 17 people. Uh, and we're going from 1066. Uh, sorry, I've do that the wrong way around. We're going from uh, 1453 minus 1066. So we're going to play for 387 years. We're going to divide that by 30 years. So there's 12.9 lots of 30 years. We're going to try and that by 17 positions. We're going to have to replace 220 court positions, assuming each person lives in their post for 30 years. That's insane. Who, who, I mean, okay, there is an answer to this question. And if it's you, tell me. Who wants to do that? Who wants to go in here 220 times? Click on Antiquarian, and then click on the person. I mean, in this that's a bad example, there's no one there. Click on. <laughs> okay, we need one. Where we can actually pick someone here. There's no one in my court. Here we go. Court Jester. Um, no, Court Jester is a bad example. Personal Chaplain. Okay, go. Sorry, Personal Champion. Who wants to go in here 220 times and click the top one on the list? Now, not everybody always clicks the top one on the list, but I do. Pretty much. In this particular case, maybe we'd go for this guy. Um, but generally, you kick, click someone on the list based on some very simple requirements. Let's say you want to set a food taster. Okay, so if you wanted to set a food taster, what are you going to think about? Okay, I want them to like me a certain amount. I want them to probably not be a member of my family because I don't want them to die. Uh, and I want them to um, not be ambitious or something like that. How cool would it be if I could click a little button here 
and then type, uh, not type in, but then set, like, okay, assign people to this position automatically who have the following conditions. Not a member of my dynasty, have an opinion of me above 50, have a intrigue of below 10, uh, don't have the following traits, do have the following traits, do it for me. That would be so cool, and you could set that up. And that would be an interesting story mechanic to engage with. It's not clicking a button and saying, do it for me. It's clicking a button and saying, okay, I'm going to make the decision as to who this should be, but I'm going to make the same decision over and over. So I don't want to have to make the decision manually over and over. I want you to do it for me. That's not a reduction of player agency. That's not a reduction of the story, narrative, anything like that. It's just letting it make it so that rather than doing it 12.9 times on average per playthrough based on my quick maths you just do it once fine right and of course you can always turn it on or off for different roles and of course you can always override it let's say you really don't like your son you make him your jester it just a little lock symbol appears and it, it as long as he holds the role it temporarily turns off the automation how good would that be how good would that be i think it would be great I hope you think it's a good idea too. I know it's a little bit more controversial, but, and, there, and to be clear, there are situations where you want to do it manually, but please grant me, I suspect you will, that there are also situations where you don't. And so having the optional automation allows both sides to win and both situations to flourish. Thus is my claim. And I will repeat my call to action. If you have suggestions for how to improve any Paradox game, go to the suggestions forums and post them. They are read. They are interesting places to discuss and look at other people's suggestions. Here's mine. I hope you liked it. Any comments, do let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.